So now that we understand both fluorescence and phosphorescence and the differences between them, it can be a little tempting to think that everything you see that glows is uh, either fluorescing or phosphorescing, but that's actually not true. There's a lot of different types of luminescence, a lot of different types of, of giving off light, and we can distinguish between a few other flavors of photoluminescent effects. So first of all, just as a reminder, we have fluorescence and phosphorescence. Fluorescence, if I pull up a picture over here of uh, some examples of fluorescent objects, either a fluorescent light bulb or some fluorescent markers or the, the fluorescent um, uh, pieces that are embedded in the printing on, on dollar bills, both in the US and in other countries, those are all examples of fluorescence. We know they fluoresce because if we turn off the uh, source of energy that's exciting the molecules, then the, the glowing stops immediately. And that's because that's a very rapid process that's not spin forbidden as opposed to phosphorescence. And if we, I'll show you some examples of a phosphorescent object. So glow-in-the-dark stars on a child's bedroom wall or, or plastic glow-in-the-dark toys that you have to charge up in the light, glow for a few minutes after the light is turned off. Those are phosphorescent. The emission is spin forbidden. for a phosphorescent process. But in both of those examples, the source of the excitation is the same. In both cases, we shine a high energy photon on the molecule, it gives us back a lower energy photon, either much later in the case of phosphorescence or immediately uh, within nanoseconds or so in the case of fluorescence. So for both of those cases, we've excited the molecule with light and it gives back light of a lower uh, energy, lower frequency, longer wavelength. There's other types of luminescence that where the excitation doesn't happen with a photon. For example, if I pull up a few more examples here, you're all familiar with glow sticks and because of the the color of the glow sticks you might immediately think that's fluorescence or phosphorescence going on, but if you think about it you realize that can't be the case because you, uh, first of all, they, they glow for some period of time so it can't be fl fluorescence. Uh, but you don't have to charge them up with light. You don't have to put them under a light source to make them glow. In fact, if you've ever used a glow stick, you know that you have to, you have to break them. There's a, a small glass tube inside of this tube that you break, mix two chemical reagents together. When those two reagents mix with one another, that chemical reaction is the source of energy. So that's a completely different type of photoluminescence that we call chemiluminescence. And the source of the energy that causes those photons to be emitted is, in fact, a chemical reaction. So other than that, the, the uh, excitation happens from a different source. This chemical reaction provides enough energy to get the molecule into some electronically excited state. After that, the emission may take place in much the same way. So it may be much the same types of light that are given off. It's just the source of the excitation uh, that's different. Another example, if I switch to another example, so I have here a picture of some fireflies. So that's uh, supposed to be a firefly glowing on uh, some pieces of grass or a uh, glowing jellyfish. So these are examples of living creatures that give off light that they produce th themselves. So those are examples of bioluminescence. The only difference between a bioluminescent uh, living organism and a chemiluminescent glow stick is that the in this case the chemical reactions are being produced inside the body of some living organism. So we would call that a biochemical reaction. There's still chemistry going on that excites molecules into an excited uh, electronically excited state, but because that chemical reaction is going is taking place inside a living organism, we call that a biochemical reaction instead of a chemical reaction, and we can distinguish bioluminescence, glowing of some uh, living creature from chemiluminescence where we've engineered the chemical reaction ourselves in a laboratory somewhere. And as one more, slightly more exotic example of a type of luminescence, I'll, I'll show you a picture of 
uh, an additional type of luminescence called triboluminescence. The best known example of which might be this wintergreen lifesaver effect. If you've ever um, done this yourself or heard about it, if you take a wintergreen lifesaver, specifically wintergreen, it doesn't work with other flavors, and you uh, either chew it in, in the dark yourself, it will give off little sparks, not electrical sparks, but it will give off photons, it will create light. Here's an example of crushing a wintergreen lifesaver in a wrench, and that will cause, that's enough to cause the wintergreen lifesaver to emit light. It will luminesce, and the source of the energy in this case is friction or, or mechanical work. So we've put enough energy into the molecules of this wintergreen lifesaver by, by crushing it, by compressing it, by causing the, uh, the friction in the molecules to uh, uh, rub against one another, and that is enough energy to excite some of the molecules into an electronically excited state. When they fall back down, they give off visible photons. So, so uh, that's an example of triboluminescence. Tribo, in this case, comes from the word, uh, in that root is, is based in the word for friction. So this is luminescence due to friction or due to mechanical work. So the point is, not all light that is emitted by chemical molecules is the same type of luminescence. Depending on where the source of the energy that gave rise to that emission comes from, we categorize those different types of photoluminescence uh, differently.